Good evening. I only have one goal tonight, and that is to convince you that data and data science is very important to innovation. It's crucial that data and data science are within a company to leverage all the important aspects of data. And also, the three symbols you see on my slide will make sense to you at the end of this talk. So, being a theoretical computer scientist, I like to define things first before I actually use them. So, let's first start with innovation. What is innovation? Innovation means that we want to take things that already exist, change them using well-known methods, and make them better. We want to take them to the next level. That's what innovation is about. What is data? Well, data is something that's everywhere. You have tiny bits of information that are across the world, across the planet. And we want to leverage them again to use for innovation. So let's start with this quote. It's a quote from David McCandless. It says that data is a new soil. What does it mean? It means that when you have data, you, you take it as a, your garden. You want to do something with it. You want to make it profitable. So let's see how we can do that. Who of you knows the, the HBO show Silicon Valley in the audience? Seafood app? So what the seafood app is about, it's on the show, it's an app that can recognize your food. So you point the camera to your plate and it says, well, this is the thing you're eating. Only the goof of the app is that it can only recognize that it's a hot dog or not a hot dog. So there's only two options. But the amazing thing here is that this app is actually in the App Store. You can just download it and it works. So the producers of the show, they actually hired someone to take all the hot dog images from the planet and train a deep learning network to recognize hot dogs. That's great, I guess. Uh, but anyway, what's the main point here is that one week later on Pinterest, the following shows up. You can now upload your pictures of your own dishes and then you can just see what's on there. You can see that there's a hot dog on your plate or anything else. But you can also search for recipes. So we have created an actual use case by using all this data. The whole point here is that we want to take a dream and from that dream, we want to build something that can improve the world and al also the thing itself, we can improve and we can create a new dream. And we want to create this pipeline where we can keep improving ourselves using data. And I am convinced that this can be done by using three things. That is data, that is tools. We need tools to leverage the data. And we need someone to operate the tools. We need someone, like this guy here, to do something with the tools and to have the right knowledge to take them to the next level. That is why we have the three images. We have the brains, we have the tools, and we have the data. We just need to use them in the right way. So that's why I'd like to do an experiment with you guys. I hope you're up for it. I don't like to do these things when I'm in the audience, but now I have choice, so. Um, you have a very simple job. The only thing that you need to do is remain seated at all costs. So you need to look at the person to the right of you. You need to ask, what is the battery level of your phone? And then you need to report it to my data scientist team. Please stand up, data scientist team. I myself am part of the data scientist team. So you can also use me. Uh, you can spread across the room a bit. So they have a notebook and they will note down all the percentages of all your phones so we can map it and we can analyze all the data. Your job is to think of a new way of getting the data there or an existing way. You can do whatever you want, you just remain seated. Again, remain seated and you have one minute to complete your assignment. Go ahead. <laughs> so data sciences team, Start analyzing, please. You can go back to your seats. And if you're done, you can report the results to me, and then we'll, we'll figure something out. Uh, so I'm glad that these things didn't happen. Not, none, of the, none of the people got mad, I think. So my colleague Ronnie here was a bit uh, less lucky. But what did happen now? I think we can all agree it was kind of chaos. So, but sometimes chaos is good, so anyway. Um, so the first thing we noticed that there was a lot of information coming through the data scientists. Is it processed yes, uh, yet, by the way? Oh, you, got a, you got an airplane? Great. Uh, so there was too much information to deal with at the moment itself. 
That's the first thing we can see. And then when the time got to 60 minutes, I predicted this, um, we can see that there was even more information coming in. So it was at the beginning, they were just standing there. And to the end, they were just grabbing information all over the place. So this was not quite ideal. And then finally, there were a lot of methods. We saw an airplane, a paper airplane, airplane that was thrown. We've seen people shouting. We've seen people writing something down. So there were a lot of different ways that the information got to the data scientists. So they still have to figure out your handwriting even so, because it's all different. So these are the main problems that are core to big data. That is, we have volume, velocity, and variety. Too much data, too fast data, and too different data. And every year or so, we make up another V, so we get a new characteristic, because the data becomes even more complex to deal with. So this is why it's quite important to actually know the tools you're using. How can we leverage this? How can we fix this for the poor data scientists that are still working on it? And the answer is, at some point, like a decade ago, we got to Hadoop. Who has heard of Hadoop? Hadoop is actually a technology that allows to deal with this V problem. It can deal with large amounts of data. It can offer processing on top of this data. So it can help the data scientist to get something out of there or to look into the data. And since then, since the origins of Hadoop, we have a total data landscape and everything here is a new technology that aims to solve one of these new problems. So the data scientist has to know the tools and that's what I said before. There are tools, but you need to know them. So it's very important. So why this, does this experiment fail? Because we did not use the right tool. I think that's quite obvious. So let's retry with a new tool. Yet another experiment. So now take your phones and you get the following job. You can go to menti.com and you can fill in the code you see on top. That's 576943. And you can just answer the basic question of your phone's battery percentage and the brand. And if all goes well, I start an analyzing this data immediately. Oh, first ones are coming in. I see Android is ahead. Oh, things are changing. The advantage of using this tool, I think it's quite obvious. We can immediately start analyzing and we can see that there are a lot of more Android users than there are Apple users. And we can also see that people's batteries are fine. So I think the need for the, the extra battery packs that we bought as gifts, just <laughs> put them away, <laughs> not necessary. We can see all the complaints about the iPhone battery being not so good is also okay. So, well, if I was a battery manufacturer, I would be quite happy with this set. And also TEDx, I think you can do something with this data so to maybe target some people for that use Androids or something like that. But anyway, so the main point of my presentation is that now we use the right tool for the job. We used something and I was not responsible for collecting all the data and figuring stuff out. The tool did that for me. It presented it in a uniform way to me and I could immediately start drawing conclusions and gaining insight in, into what was happening. So this time everything was okay. We only needed one data scientist instead of the, set, uh, the team of three. So that's also an advantage, I guess. But what does this actually mean for you or for, for an organization? Well, let's see what an organization typically means or what it does with data. The first thing is we gather data that you can see on the left side. We gather data from a lot of different resources. We gather data from the web. We gather data from sensors, from paper even, or from people directly. And we need to capture all of these things so we can output the data to the users or to other technologies that hook up to the data. And what we have in between is very important. There are two ways you typically do data processing. The first way is that you, every week you want to report or every month or every day. So that is batch processing. At one point in time, you go through all your data and you just do something with it. And then there's streaming processing. And that means you get live insights to your data. For example, if we look at what Twitter is doing, you can see a trending feed, so you can see live what people in Belgium are looking for currently. This is an example of streaming or real-time processing data. And then we have, of course, the layer on top. We have the data exploration layer. 
and also the data science layer. That's a layer where the data scientist lives. He lives between the tools and he needs to be able to capture all of this data and to hook himself up to all of this, these pipelines. And this is a very important thing. So if we simplify the image, you get again the same three images. You get data coming in, you get data coming out, and in between it's all made up of tools. So you have a pipeline, a data pipe that consists of well-known things and a data scientist lives there. He can use all the data that's available. But there's one important thing he has to do, and that's know the data landscape. Of course, you don't need to know all the technologies, but you need to know the basics. When do I use which tool? What type of tools, tools are out there? So that's the thing the data scientist needs to master. How do you build your data? How do you build your infrastructure? And this is a very well-known image that represents this. First, of course, you need to be able to collect data. But data is everywhere, so collecting it is easy. The difficult thing is storing it. You need a lot of infrastructure in place to capture it and to keep it there. And the next thing you need to do once you have the data, you want to use it, you want to adjust it, you want to do operations on it so you can actually leverage it. And then, once you have that, you can go to the next level, start exploring use cases, and with these use cases, you can, for example, go to the top of the pipeline or of the pyramid and use AI. Everybody wants to do AI, of course, because it's a buzzword, but we want to solve real problems. And you can only discover the problems when your base is solid. You want to have your infrastructure in place so you get reliable data. You get clean data out of it and you can use it for anything you want. Coming back to my original image where we dream build and improve our idea. We want to do this in an organization, but what typically happens is that we don't just do this, but we just have a problem, we solve the problem, and that's it. We have created some value and we stop there. But we want to keep iterating over this. So I propose a different way of doing this. So instead of going directly from the problem to the solution, what we actually want to do is hook up a data science pipeline. We want to capture the data, research it, and understand the problem thoroughly so that the next step is that we can create new ideas, that we can gain new insights, which can be fueled again to new problems. And this is the dream cycle we can create using the existing pipeline that's already in place in the company. And yet again, we can find the three things. We need the data itself, we also need the tools to do the research and to make it easier for the data scientist. And we need the brains, the ones that know the tools, that know the data, that know the domain, so they can actually leverage all the information that's there. So coming back to the original quote, that data is a new soil, I think we can adjust this one, seeing as data is so important for innovation, for making decisions, for creating value. I think we can adjust it to the following. Data is not the new soil, it is the best soil we have for innovation. Thank you.